Hi everybody. I know it's been a little while since I uh, did a video. I'm sorry about that. I had a couple of things happen. One was that my precious iMac hard drive died. So I actually had to bring it up to the Apple store and uh, wait a few days for a replacement and have them put it in and everything. So that uh, took me out of productive mode for a little while. The other thing was I actually switched to using XNA so that I can publish my game on Xbox Live in the community games area. Um, I, I realized that for the type of game I want to make, which is like an action platformer, uh, the controls on the Windows or Mac aren't going to be ideal. I mean, keyboard and mouse for a game like that is really not where it's at. So I realized I needed to do that. So I've actually switched everything I already did um, out of C++ and SDL into C Sharp and XNA Game Studio. It's, um, it's very neat using XNA because everything seems very efficient. Um, I don't have to, for example, write functions to test if rectangles intersect. It's just right there in XNA. So it actually was much easier this time around. Um, so it's been going really well. I'm going to go ahead and reboot into Windows and then uh, show you what I've done with my game. Okay, so we're in Windows and I'm running the project. Um, I'm, I'm using Camtasia and for some reason it, the frame rate doesn't look that good on preview. So if this comes out a little jerky, I apologize in advance, and I'll try to find something that works a little better for next week. Actually, if you have something other than Fraps that works really good, please tell me what it is. Anyway, uh, I have a sprite. I'm controlling this with a USB gamepad, which is a lot of fun. So the sprite will run back and forth when I move the stick left and right, um, and he's actually colliding with these gray blocks. These are placeable obstacles that I've created. They have their own bounding box, so you can actually drag and move them around, and the player will collide and interact with them. So when I jump, the player lands on the ground and can continue to run and everything like that. So his falling will be canceled at that point. There's a lot of logic going on with the collision, but it was pretty cool because once I did it, now I understand how it works and it doesn't seem so mysterious. So in addition to collision on the ground, you can also bump your head and it terminates the, the rising force of the jump and initiates a fall once again. There's also sideways collision so you can run into something and you'll be stopped and you can continue to run. I set the behavior so that the player will still run that way you just don't feel as much like you're being blocked and you still have the sense of motion so it's a little tweak that's nice. The um, the, the the sideways collision it, it doesn't work as it, it ideally should. You can see there's still some empty space in between the player sprite and the wall but that's something I can tweak if I just adjust the size of the bounding box, the rectangle that's around the player. So uh, the player will also loop at the top of the screen. He'll just His position just gets reset if he goes off screen, and his velocity also gets reset to zero. You know, rather than just going downward really, really fast and having that speed compound exponentially, I reset the velocity to zero so that the player will actually be able to recover from that in this test application. Um, that word poopy, that's on the screen because I was testing out a sprite font because when I work on a map editor uh, as my next phase of the project, I'm going to need some text that I can click on and buttons I can interact with. Um, so that's just there temporarily. Actually, of course, everything's temporary. But Anyway, so I've, I've redone everything that I had in C++ and SDL now in C Sharp and XNA, which I really enjoy a lot more. Because, for example, I don't have to write another rectangle intersection, uh, intersecting function. I can just put, you know, if obstacle one dot intersects player bounds, and then do the, the collision logic there. So that's really cool. It's actually something I would really recommend for someone who's new to programming. C++, in my limited experience, is very, um, I don't know, it feels very hackish when you're working with it. Like, you have to do a lot of things yourself, which is very satisfying. But at the same time, um, I feel like having this framework set up that makes things a little easier for me to do is a really good idea. Because I'll learn pro how to do a lot of programming stuff in time, but it's more satisfying when you're at the beginning of a project and you have a lot of motivation to be able to actually work on something that resembles a game instead of having to really get in there and write these sort of hello world programs. So Long story short, it's a lot of fun. I really recommend it if you're interested in programming things for Windows and Xbox 360. So for the next video that I post, you can look forward to hearing a little bit about a level editor, which will be the next logical step in helping things come together. 
I think that once I can create some maps and then I can just add on top of them. So for example, if I have a map, I can put a ladder in there to get from one level to the next and then I'll be able to do logic for you know, putting how a ladder will work. Or I can create some obstacles like smashers or spikes that kill the player or I can then populate them with enemies and it seems like the next logical step. So that's where I'm going from here. I also created these bullets that'll target the player when you shoot the end, uh, when you hit the end key, and uh, they don't really do much other than do that. But I figured rather than just make this arbitrary bullet that just injures the player, I'll go ahead and do a map editor and you know add enemies and things one at a time and just take it from there. So I'm I'm feeling really good because I'm pretty confident in the skills that I've got and so far everything that I've done, you know I, I found a solution if I was having a problem. So when I said, well crap, I need to make a camera system that will scroll along with the player except when the player is near the edge of the world, you know, how do I do that? Well, I found some resources that worked really well and I'll post some of the links that have helped me on the right hand side of the video here. So anyway, I'm just babbling on. So I'll see you next time and hang in there and leave some comments and I hope your own projects are going well if you're working on something. Take it easy.